Hi, I'm Steve Bollander, and welcome to Volume 2 of the MX-50 Shaken Not Stirred. Volume 2 is going to pick up where Volume 1 left off, bringing you a number of new special effects that are capable of being created on the MX-50. Since Volume 1 covered basic operating procedures, we'll try not to repeat any material that was covered previously, with the exception of a few topics that Volume 1 viewers expressed a concern about, such as setting up and using the programmable memory section and we'll show you how to take advantage of that function in creating your own customized special mode. Also included on this tape are some backgrounds suitable for chroma keying and luminance keying that you'll find very useful in a variety of production applications. And we'll take an in-depth look at Panasonic's latest addition to its digital mixer line, the WJMX30. Once again, every special effect and transition that you'll see on this tape were created entirely with the WJMX50. So without further ado, let's take a look at an effect called color blocking. You've seen this effect on everything from soft drink commercials to music videos. It's the highlighting of the featured subject by way of allowing its color to show through amidst a monochrome or black and white background. On volume one, this technique was illustrated by having a color subject chroma keyed in over a separate black and white background. But what if you wanted to use only one source tape and achieve the same effect? Here again, chroma key comes to the rescue, but this time your single source footage is assigned to the same source input on both channels of the MX-50. Bring the T-bar down to the B-bus and turn the chroma key function on. Now go to the effects section and push mono on the B-channel only. Since chroma key works on the principle of the B bus being the foreground or keyed in channel, it will be black and white, with the exception of whatever color is allowed to be keyed in behind it from the A bus. And that particular color is determined by the hue control. And of course, the fine tuning of this effect is done with the slice control. What do you do if you want a compressed picture in picture, but you like to place that compressed picture in something other than a square white pattern, such as a circle, oval, or diamond white? First, push compression, and then the square white pattern. Now with the T-bar, compress the picture in picture down to the size that you want it, and engage the scene grabber mode. Now place your PIP where you want it on the screen, and change the square white pattern to a circle, an oval, or a diamond. You can use the T-bar to trim the edges of the scene grab picture. This entire procedure can be entered into the user memory section for instant call of this effect at a later time. Using the multi-effect in the digital effects section permits the multiple box displaying of up to 16 repetitive pictures that can either cycle through continuously or fill the screen once and then stop. This is a nice effect that multiplies the same picture 16 times. But what if you want to display 16 different pictures at the same time, such as a background for a wedding video title sequence? Take your raw footage tape and pick out 16 different highlight shots and then record them for about two seconds each onto a submaster tape. Using your time counter, make sure that each segment is as close to being the exact same length. If you're working with a frame accurate edit controller, recording exactly two seconds at a time should be no problem. Once you have compiled your 16 shots onto your submaster tape, take the submaster tape and play it back through the MX-50 while engaging the multi-effect mode. By the way, the very first and the very last segment that you recorded on the submaster tape should be about four seconds long to allow for queuing and effect startup time. Push the Once button under the Multi-Effect button. When the Submaster starts playing back the first scene, push the Multi-Effect button three times to call up the 16-picture Multi. And while the effect starts grabbing each picture as it comes in, begin adjusting the time control so that each picture grab matches the two-second intervals of the incoming scenes. This may take a little practice at first, but once you've found that ideal time speed, you can memorize it into the User Memory section. Now that you've got the timing just right, go ahead and record your finished collage onto your Edit Master. At this point, you can add paint, mosaic, or any other effect. Or you can dissolve or wipe to the screen from another bus of the MX-50. One of the most powerful effects and probably the least used is the MX-50's user programmable memory section. 
mostly because of the fact that the owner's manual doesn't explain it all that well, and we didn't have enough time on volume one to really get into it. The memory section not only remembers basic panel settings, but it also permits the customizing of your own effects complete with transition time, color correction, and picture-in-picture -picture screen location. For instance, let's say that you want a full screen to compress down to a one-fifth size PIP and float up to the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And while all this is happening, you want the remaining screen to go into a black and white strobing effect with posterization added. And you want a magenta colored heavy border on the PIP. And of course, you want your titles to fade in right when all this happens. And when all of this is up on screen, you want the PIP to float down to the lower right hand corner while the titles fade out and the posterized black and white full screen stops strobing and begins a nine picture multi effect. How do you pull this off in just three seconds? Simple, just memorize it. First, clear the MX50's memory by turning it off and back on again while holding down the memory and shift button simultaneously. Now set up your compression along with the square white pattern. Use the T-bar to size the PIP and use the joystick to position the picture on the screen. Push the border button twice to get a heavy border. Scroll through the background color selector until the border is magenta. Push Mono, Paint, and Strobe on channel A of the Effects section. Turn on the Title section and queue up your title. Set the Auto Take Transition Speed to, let's say, 30. And set the Auto Fade section to DSK only, with a fade speed of about 40. Now memorize all of this by pushing the Memory button, followed by Memory Position number 1. Its LED will blink three times when the data has been stored. Now use your joystick to reposition the PIP in the lower right hand corner of the screen. And go ahead and make the PIP a little bit smaller. Turn off the mono, paint, and strobe, engage the nine picture multi, and fade out the titles. Now memorize these moves into memory position number two. At this point, if you like, turn the MX-50 off and go get a cup of coffee. When you return, turn the MX-50 on, roll your tapes, and push event number one. Now that custom effect of yours is standing by and it will engage as soon as you push the auto take button. Wow, look at that! Now push the auto take button again as event number two automatically follows suit. And of course, if you only have those two memory positions filled, you can toggle back and forth between them all day long until you turn off the memory event section. If more event positions are filled, sequential call up will occur with every press of the auto take button. Now all of your favorite transitions can be saved and used anytime you need them in just a matter of seconds. Here's a simple little effect that gives the illusion of the video walls that you see at some trade shows where multiple TV monitors are stacked to produce one large TV screen. Send a video signal to the B bus and hit the multi effect button three times to get a 16 picture multi and push the once button to freeze it. Now go back to the A bus and feed it a video signal while turning the downstream key section on and selecting the B bus as its input. Slowly bring up the right fader control until the outline of the B bus starts showing through. You can change the color of the outline with the background color selector. And for the best effect, push the edge button four times to add some drop shadow depth to the picture. This effect can be faded in and out of by way of the DSK fader. A common feature on switchers costing four times the price of the MX-50 is the drop shadow effect for picture in pictures. It's even featured on the new WJ MX-30 digital mixer. But how do you get one on the 50? Another not too frequently used section of the MX-50 is a downstream keyer. Any shape that you feed into it by way of an external camera is going to be keyed in over the rest of the MX-50's signal output, including the letter L laying on its side. First create a picture-in-picture -picture compression and place it in the desired position on the screen. Now feed your sideways L into the external camera input of the downstream key section. Bring up the right side fader control until you have a nice clean key and move your title card and zoom in your camera until the drop shadow fits the edges of the compressed picture. 
Included with your videotape is your official drop shadow modification accessory, which by the way is a $2300 option on the Sony DFS 500. Fancier drop shadows can be obtained from cut and paste graphics books such as this. Or you can send me a self-addressed stamp envelope and I'll send you a small variety pack of drop shadows. One of the apparent shortcomings of the MX-50 is its lack of video loop-through jacks on the individual source inputs for monitoring your separate cameras during a live switch shoot. According to Panasonic Systems Engineers, the inputs can be split with a T-connector like this one available from Radio Shack. The composite camera signal comes into the T-connector and is fed into the MX-50 and simultaneously split out to a monitor. Panasonic says that provided you do not turn on the 75 ohm termination switch on the monitor, you shouldn't have any impedance matching problems. The picture that you're looking at right now is a camera with one of its outputs being sent along a 100 foot composite video cable, split with the T-connector and hooked up to a monitor. The image on the right is the same camera, plugged directly into another channel of the MX-50, without being split. Just remember to use broadcast quality composite video cable for long cable runs and not the YC type, which have a tendency to lose their proper phasing of color and luminance when 20 feet or so are exceeded. Available in August, from a land not so far away. Live portable switching made easy and affordable. A Venture Media and JPS Video production. The TV show Entertainment Tonight uses a technique for highlighting superimposed titles over video with see-through title banners. This procedure is similar to the spotlight effect mentioned on Volume 1, where your video source is fed into the A bus, a background color is assigned to the B bus, and a score white pattern is selected with both the one-way and reverse buttons turned off. Bring the square white pattern up to about an eighth size square and use the aspect ratio control to make it wider. Position the pattern low on the screen and add a soft border to it. 
Now go to the fade section and set up video fade to A and slowly bring the fader lever down until the live video signal starts showing through. Place your titles in the banner and adjust the wipe size accordingly. If you want to use one source tape yet still create the illusion of an AB roll type of horizontal flip performed through the special mode, run your footage up to the point where you want the transition to take place and then perform the effect. Then stop your edit master and back it up to where the flip goes to a solid background color. Now cue up your source tape to the new scene and with the T-bar manually walk the MX-50 through the flip transition until a solid background color is present. Now perform your edit while pushing the auto take button precisely at the edit point for a continuation of the horizontal flip into your new scene. If you have an edit controller with GPI capabilities, this transition will be automatically performed for you. A vertical flip can be achieved out of the special mode by using the curtain white pattern along with compression with your source tape being assigned to one bus and a background color assigned to the other. Just set up your edit points as described previously. If you want to get artsy, having your video camera fed into the external camera input of the downstream key section while simultaneously rolling an A and B tape through the A and B channels of the MX-50, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. A silhouette superimposed over mixed video tape sources. And adding drop shadow edges to the keyed in camera will even make the effect more dramatic. Titles created on external devices such as computer programs and standalone character generators, like the Videonics Title Maker, can be introduced into the MX-50 in an upstream capacity through the chroma key mode. As a matter of fact, the default background color on the Title Maker is a perfect shade of blue for this type of keying. Just assign your incoming titles with their borders, colors, and transitions to the B channel. Assign your video source tape to the A channel. Turn on the chroma key section and bring the T-bar down to the B channel. Adjust your hue control for the title maker's shade of blue and adjust the slice control as needed for fine tuning. This process eliminates the need of the MX-50's video output to pass through another video device that could possibly reduce resolution or add unwanted color artifacts. It's time to take a look at Panasonic's latest addition to its digital mixer line, the WJMX30. But before we do, I'd like to thank and acknowledge the contributors of the skydiving and action boom footage that has been used on this tape. It's called Sky Surfing, and Mike McGowan of Fun Air Productions in Eloy, Arizona, is an internationally known skydiving videographer whose work can be seen on everything from special interest videos to TV commercials. You can reach Mike at area code 602-466-4133. And by the way, the footage that you're watching right now was taped with helmet-mounted VX3 and TR-101 high-band 8 camcorders. Eric Ortlieb, the owner of Classic Video Products in Aliso Viejo, California, shows off his highly acclaimed camera stabilizing support system, the Action Boom, a multi-purpose device that supports anything from a one-pound palm quarter to a three-chip dockable. As you can see, the shot possibilities are endless, limited only by one's imagination. You can reach Eric at area code 714-362-9737. Panasonic just recently introduced the WJMX30 at NEB last month in Las Vegas, and according to Panasonic, it will be the official replacement for the WJMX12. And as you will see in a moment, it kind of fills the gap between the AVE5 and the MX50. I'm going to let the MX30 run through its factory demo mode as I describe some of its features. Looking like a slightly smaller version of the MX-50, the MX-30 has inherited the best of both worlds from the AVE-5 and the MX-12. It possesses the large style T-bar of the MX-50 and a comfortable layout that is much more user-friendly than its predecessor, the MX-12. 108 white patterns and dual bus digital effects accompany two-channel color correction and auto-take, auto-fade functions. It has interface options similar to the MX-50, such as a GPI port, advanced sync output, and an RS-232C connector for controlling the MX-30 via computers. 
There are two main source input positions and whatever camera is assigned to the external camera input can also be assigned as a third primary input source by pushing the number one and two source buttons simultaneously, making the MX-30 an ideal mixer for three camera live switch productions. It will accept the standard array of Panasonic character generators including the KB-50 and it too has an eight position user memory section for storing custom effects. A few unique features found on the MX-30 are the three levels of gradation for the background colors, the ability to place two picture-in-pictures on screen simultaneously, one from each of the two input buses, drop shadows for the picture-in-pictures, and an external key mode that permits the creation of a wipe shape from an external camera title card. The MX-30 does not have the MX-50's true compression capabilities, therefore the fly-on type effects are not possible. And absent on the 30 is the transition speed and white pattern display window. Though the overall resolution and quality of the video signals emitting from the MX-30 are not as high as the MX-50, the 30 is a substantial jump up from the AVE-5 and MX-12. The MX-30 was introduced primarily as a companion piece to Panasonic's AG1970 level VCRs, rather than the MX-50's appeal to the AG7750 owners, which is evident by the omission of XLR audio inputs and an RS-422 interface protocol. The MX-30 will be available in the mid part of July 1993 and will tote a list price of about $3,700. The MX-30 is definitely not an MX-50, but for an entry-level industrial digital mixer, it does knock the socks off the AVE-5 and the MX-12. Here's a nice effect that puts three compressed pictures on screen at once. First record onto a Submaster tape two sources from two VCRs while the MX-50 is in the double compression mode on a straight vertical white pattern. Now play your Submaster back through the MX-50 while assigning it to one bus and a third video source to another bus. This time engage the split white pattern along with the compression so that your two picture Submaster tape has the third video source compressed in the middle of it. A frequent concern about resuming an edit of a still frame picture, such as doing a photo montage, is the presence of flagging or glitches at the resumed edit point. This is caused by the actual edit not taking place during the vertical interval blanking section, which is the non-video signal that occurs between each frame. Ideally, every frame-to-frame -frame transition should look like this if the edit took place at the right time. If the edit occurs in the middle of a frame or field, it will look like this and that playback at normal speed will give you a glitch or flagging that you've been experiencing. The higher end VCRs will lock up their horizontal phasing during a long enough pre-roll. However, the prosumer level VCRs may require the redoing of an edit point several times until the edit takes place off of the frame or field. If you want to use the memory section and include the trail mode as one of your stored effects, you're going to have to slow down the trail speed and enter it last among all of your other effects. And make sure that you push the memory button and memory location while the trail button is still lit. If you're handy with a soldering iron, a GPI trigger can be added to edit controllers such as the JVC RMG810 or the Panasonic AGA750. Essentially what you're doing is tapping off the edit start pulse of these parallel protocol controllers and sending this make contact pulse to the MX50's GPI input. When the edit controller tells the editing VCR to kick into the record mode from the pre-roll, the MX50's auto take function will automatically engage. The tap point on the JVC A10 controller is pin number 1 for the ground connection and pin number 12 for the edit start pulse off of the editing VCR control cable. On the Panasonic 750 controller, pin number 12 is ground and pin number 9 is edit start. The ground connection goes to the shield of a BNC plug and the edit start pulse goes to the tip of the BNC plug. When copying items such as wedding invitations or long photographs, the slide button pushed twice used in conjunction with the horizontal white pattern can give you a rostrum camera type effect by freezing the top half of the picture or invitation on one bus and lining up the bottom half to be frozen on the other bus. Set up your ideal transition speed in the auto take section and watch your image scroll up the screen.
On Volume 1, we showed you how to create video toaster wipes on the MX-50 by importing black and white tape copies of the transitions in through your downstream key and chroma key section. But a lot of you responded with, but I don't have access to a toaster. Where can I get those wipe patterns on tape? Well, immediately following this, four popular patterns are included for you to use. If you want an entire set of 64 toaster patterns on video, Walter Bennett of Time Capsule Video sells such a tape called Spectacular Video Wipes available either on regular VHS or Super VHS tapes. You can reach Walter at area code 918-660-0220. Here's one of my favorite MX-50 tricks. I call it compression looping. 
which essentially is a form of electronic video feedback in which the MX50's program output is fed back into one of the input source channels and combined by way of a compression white pattern with the primary input video source. Since the possibility combinations of this effect is virtually unlimited, I'm only going to give you just a few examples just to get you started. Start with taking one of the main outputs from the MX-50 and plugging it into input source number four, or whichever input position that you seldom use. This connection can be done with either a YC cable or a composite since the secondary source doesn't play a big part in overall resolution. Assign your main video source to input number one. Bring the T-bar up to the A bus and turn off both the one-way and reverse buttons in the wipe direction section. Turn on the compression mode and select the square wipe pattern. Begin rolling your source footage and slowly bring the T-bar down towards the B bus until you start getting an infinite picture in picture. Engage the wipe positioner and move the effect around on the screen. Now let's get a little fancy. Throw on a border and engage the aspect ratio function. Turn the aspect ratio knob one way or the other until you get multiple blocks going off into infinity, either horizontally or vertically. Go to a soft border and bring down the T-bar a little further. By now you should see the light at the end of the tunnel. By the way, all of these effects can be programmed into the user memory section. Now let's try an effect that I call ripple compression. Simply change the wipe pattern from square to a straight vertical or horizontal wipe and adjust the T-bar accordingly. Push the wipe pattern repeatedly to change the direction of the ripple. And finally for that majestic scrolling title effect, go to a solid background color on the A-bus, return to the compressed square wipe pattern, add a soft border, and start scrolling your downstream keyed titles making the necessary T-bar and white position adjustments as desired. Like I said, some experimentation on your part will reveal a number of other compression looping effects that can be used with anything from videotape footage to incoming computer graphics. It seemed like all the video equipment manufacturers were putting great effort into coming out with new editing VCRs, digital mixers, audio systems, and relatively low-end gimmick cameras. And no one really concentrated on a decent three-chip Super VHS camcorder with low-light capabilities and a price tag under $6,500 until now. Officially introduced at NAB 1992, the JVC X2 appeared bringing hope and promise to industrial and special event videographers who wanted a camera that could do everything. So let's see if it does. The X2 is a 15 and a half pound one piece Super VHS three chip camcorder with two hi-fi audio tracks plus two linear audio tracks. A built-in monitor speaker sits on the side. It comes standard with a Canon 13 power lens with true servo zoom control. It has the option for a plug-in time code generator and it possesses all the same features found on a $35,000 Sony Betacam. As a matter of fact, its resemblance to the BVW 400 is uncanny. It has two gain up positions, plus 9 and plus 18, plus a new feature introduced on JVC's flagship camera, the KY27, called Low Lux, which essentially gives the camera a plus 30 dB gain boost. There is an audio limiter for all four audio channels, and the X2 accommodates both JVC's brick type batteries as well as a Sony NP1 type battery. Right now, the X2 is being operated in studio lighting conditions in the zero gain mode. By the way, you're watching a fourth generation of this camera's performance on your tape. Now the studio lights are turned off, leaving only ambient room light with late afternoon sun peeking through a curtained window, and the X2 is in the plus nine gain up mode. Now it's nighttime and all the lights are turned off. The door is shut to the studio and only a small video monitor is in the opposite corner of the room. The X2 is now in the low lux mode. Sure, it's a bit grainy, but what the camera is seeing right now, I can't. Some side-by-side -side raw wedding footage shot with the Sony EVW300 on the left and the X2 on the right indicates a more true-to-life image with the X2 compared to the Sony's glossy bluish look. This particular wedding was shot at 6 p.m. with only an overhead ultralight and residual sunset window light. Split screen with an AG450 is really not fair, but I'll show it to you anyway to illustrate, if nothing else, the appreciable difference between a single chip and a three chip camcorder. 
With the exception of example footage used to illustrate effects on this videotape, everything else was shot with the X2. The list price on the X2 is $7,900, and the reputable discount house from where I obtained mine charged me $6,200, including the lens, tripod plate, and soft shell carrying case. There are two in-depth articles in the May-June issue of Wedding Videography Today that take a complete look at what the X2 can do. So is this the camera that's going to make history as the first quality three-chip Super VHS for a decent price? I think it is. If you want to raise the black level of zero IRE on your MX50's background color to the standard 7.5, instead of using actual black for title borders and fade-outs, use the background matte color white and turn the color level knob almost all the way to the left and use a waveform monitor to achieve a 7.5 reading. If you don't have access to a waveform monitor, you can actually eyeball the level on your video monitor and use the video signal level meter on your VCR for reference. This idea came to us from Jeff Pomeroy of Westerville, Ohio, who, by the way, is getting ready to release a software package for the MX50 that will permit dedicated RS-232 interface with personal computers. I'll keep you posted on its release date and ordering information. Well, last but not least, here's a way to make your pictures flip and fly off the screen, giving the illusion of a tumble. Assign your video input source to the same input on both buses, put the MX-50 in the special mode, and select effect number 5, which is the flip. Call up black as the background color and set the auto-take transition speed to about 12 or 14. Take your raw footage and record it onto a Submaster tape. And when you get to the point where you want a simulated tumble to occur, start tapping the auto-take button as fast as you can and continue this for at least five seconds. Now take out the Submaster tape and play it back through the MX-50. Turn off the special mode and assign the incoming Submaster tape to Source 1 on the A bus and the background color black to the B bus. Turn on the compression mode and select the square white pattern with the reverse button only turned on. Set your auto take speed for about 40 and get ready. As soon as the playback picture starts flipping, push the auto take button. You can use different background colors other than black, but just make sure that they're the same for both the flipping and the pull away compression. With a little practice, you might even be able to tumble a picture onto the screen. Well, once again, you thought the MX-50 was just another pretty face. By the time we get to Volume 5, we should know at least half of what this mixer can do. I want to take this opportunity to personally thank all of you for making Volume 1 of the MX-50 Shake and Not Stirred the success that it is. And thank you for being a viewer of this tape. I'm Steve Bolander, and until I see you next time, keep that digital mixer magic going. <laughs>